لكن تحديت الظروف وخذتها وحدي صبورا مستعينا بالصلاة كم مرة عصف الأنين بداخلي كم مرة قد ذاك قلبي من أساء محرمتها وكم كرهت مصابها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Today, I've made an exception to record in this blessed month of Ramadan to counter the misguidance and the heresy of the Qadiani representative as well as the movement as a whole. Now, as we know, there was a session which I attended as part of the Sapiens Institute with Muhammad Hijab and we were discussing uh, Ahmadiyya or Qadianism and <laughs> I know uh, the cheerleader himself was gonna make a response as, as they like to call it but it was so weak so ridiculous that I thought to myself this month even though I tend not to record and I think that's been the common pattern for about two years I decided to make an exception all right <laughs> so what we'll do before Getting into the crux of the matter, let's listen to the uh, comedian or the representative of the Qadiani movement. Have a listen. Let's first of all get the position right. What, what are they saying? Are they saying that you have, he, he is Al Mahdi and he's the son of Mary, the Messiah. Not the son of, they are not claiming, from what I understand, that he is Jesus. Are they claiming that he is Jesus? No, they believe, they believe Jesus is dead. Okay, and he right. is the, the son of Mary, the right? son of Mary. So they're not claiming that he is Jesus? No. Okay, good. Not the same Jesus that's in the Quran. Now, Muhammad Hijab and Bro Haji just exposed majority of their scholars who lie that Ahmadi Muslims believe in reincarnation and believe that the promised Messiah Islam, is the same Hazrat Isa Islam, of 2000 years ago. Many Muslim scholars hide the fact that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, gave two different descriptions of the messiahs. He وسلم, described Hazrat Isa وسلم, sent to Bani Israel and the latter day messiah who was to come for the Muslim Ummah from among them as two different people. Both messiahs have different appearances. These narrations are often repeated in the authentic books of a hadith and are hidden from the Muslim public. Some scholars even twist the translations so no one realizes. Here we have the first hadith of Sahih Bukhari which describes the Messiah sent to Bani Israel, Hazrat Isa salam. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, stated that Jesus Hazrat Isa was of red complexion, curly hair and a broad chest. All Muslims agree that Hazrat Isa وسلم, sent to Bani Israel was of this complexion. He had curly hair and a broad chest. Now when we turn to the Ahadith of the Latter Day Messiah who was prophesied by the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, his description is also in Sahih Bukhari on the very same page. Why is it that the Muslim scholars always fail to mention that they are described completely differently? This is a clear proof that it was to be someone else who would come for the revival of Islam and not the Messiah sent to Bani Israel who has already died. This proves the death of Hazrat Isa salam, and also proves the truthfulness of Hazrat Ahmad salam. While describing the latter day Messiah, the Prophet salam, stated, I saw in my dream a man of brown color, not reddish complexion, brown color, the best one can see amongst brown color, and his hair was long that it fell between his shoulders, not curly, his hair was lank, and water was dribbling from his head and he was placing his hands on the shoulders of two men while going around the Kaaba. I asked, who is this? They replied, 
This is the Messiah, son of Mary. This was a title given to the Latter-day Messiah because of his resemblance to Hazrat Isa salam, of Bani Israel. We also see that 1400 years after Musa salam, Allah sent the Messiah for Bani Israel, Hazrat Isa and 1400 years after the Prophet wasalam, Allah sent the Latter-day Messiah, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed salam, of Qadiyan. Well, you heard the comedian. <laughs> so, where do I start and where do I end, right? Where do I start and where do I end? So, just to summarize, what the representative of the Qadiani movement is saying is that the two hadiths in Sahih al-Bukhari is indicating that they're two different people, meaning there's two messiahs. And the other messiah is the Dajjal Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. So, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, according to this comedian, was actually prophesied in a hadith of Sahih Bukhari. And his argument is that in one hadith, he was mentioned uh, as being red complexion, and in the other hadith, he mentions that he was of brown complexion. So his argument is that, look, there's two different, you know, uh, descriptions. And one of them is actually the Dajjal. Now, <laughs> number one, okay, this Qadiani hasn't heard of a concept called Rajih one Marjuh. So basically, there's two hadith now that mention two different things. So how do you reconcile between the two? The sun's bright today. I didn't expect it to be this bright. Let me be the bearer of bad news for you. It's not two different people. It's not two different people. Your understanding, and this is why we need to be at the forefront in smashing these doubts. Because getting these apparent narrations and then trying to twist it we Muslims are not going to accept it. Anyway, so let's go into this straight away. So, the hadith, okay, it's Sahih Bukhari as you can see on screen. Okay, let's go into that first and then we'll add some explanation. So this hadith, as you can see on screen, is narrated by Ibn Abbas and he mentions that uh, the Prophet والسلام, said that I saw Ra'itu Isa wa Musa wa Ibrahim. That I saw Isa السلام, Musa السلام, and Ibrahim السلام. So as for Isa, he was of red complexion, okay, and his hair was basically curly, and he had a broad chest, okay, and as for Musa alayhi salam, he was of brown complexion, okay, he was of brown complexion, and he had straight hair, he was tall, and then he ends off by saying, كَأَنَّهُ مِنْ رِجَالِ zut, that he, as if he is from the people of Zut. The other hadith that he's trying to use, he mentions that the Prophet ﷺ saw in a dream فَإِذَا رَجُلٌ آدَمُ كَأَحْسَنِ مَا يُرَى مِنْ أُدْمِ الرِّجَالِ That I saw a man of brown color, okay, and he is the best amongst the brown color. How did the ulama understand this hadith, okay? Just to bear in mind, the sun will fluctuate, it will get bright, it will go down, so forgive me, it's just, I don't know what's going on with the weather. But anyway, how did the muhadithun, how did the ulama understand this? Was it understood as if it's two different people? Or is there a principle that they follow which is in connection to Rajah wa Marjuh? Okay, so let's go into this. So now in my hand I've got Sahih Muslim, okay, and this is the Sharaf Nawawi. So this hadith is also in Imam Muslim's uh, collection as well. So Imam Nawawi rahmatullah alayhi comments, okay, about the different narrations that mention Isa being a brown complexion and red complexion. And he says, Wa amma wasaf Isa salawatullahu alayhi wa salam. So as for the description of Isa alayhi salam, fi hadhi riwaya, okay, in this riwaya, so this riwaya is talking about the, um, the uh, Isa alayhi salam being of red complexion, okay. Wa hiya riwayat Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu bi annahu ahmar, that he is of red complexion. And then, he is described in the narration of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, okay, that he is of brown complexion, okay, brown meaning asmar, okay. So the, the action is Adama. But this Adama is meaning Al Asmar, meaning brown. There's a narration in Bukhari that mentioned that Ibn Umar basically rejected that Isa alayhi salam was of red complexion. And he took a, he took an oath that the Prophet wasalam, didn't say these words. So he kinda had some sort of um, issues with the riwayah of Abi Hurairah. So what does Imam Nawi Rahmatullah say, as you can see where the arrow is over? He says, it's for yujuzu an yata'awwal al-ahmar ala al-adam. That it is permissible to interpret, okay, that the, the redness 
over the brightness. Okay, so the redness over the brightness. But look what he says after. Pay attention. Oh, Qadiani. But it's not intended, okay, that it is literally brown or literally red. So it's not literal. It's just basically a similar. So it could be a shade of brown, could be a shade of red, okay? And what is closer to it? So it could be a shade in between, okay? So it's not taken literally, all right? They, it could be permissible to prefer the redness, the ahmar, over the brownness, but the intent isn't that it should be, okay, this is the literal, it's brown and red, but it could be something close to it as well, okay? It should be something close to it as well. So here you go, we got Sahih Muslim by Imam and Nawawi. When your foundations are upon cover, when your foundations are upon zandaka, we don't expect nothing less from you. Now, Muhammad al Amin Shangiti mentions, It is established and known in ilm al usul, okay, in the knowledge of foundational knowledge basically, and in the, the knowledge of hadith, that if it's possible to combine between two hadith, it is imperative to combine between them unanimously. Okay, it's unanimous that you combine the two. You don't separate them. Okay, this is known. Okay, but to the Qadianis, who obviously are upon kufr and dalal, okay, they wouldn't know this, would they? And he mentioned that you don't reject between what one is more, you know, stronger than the other. Because both of them are truthful. So both of these hadith are truthful. It's not as if it's separate. We don't reject one of them over the other. It's not, you don't separate them, you combine them. It is no. As Imam Muhammad al Amin Shangit, he says, Wajibul Jam Bainahuma Ijma'an. That unanimously you combine them. Okay, you don't separate them, my ignorant friend. Then he says, There's no contradiction between the two. There is no contradiction. There is no ta'arud. Okay, there's no clashes basically. That he mentions that it is accepted that there's ijma'a from amongst the people of knowledge upon its obligation to combine between the two evidences if it's possible okay so this is the point the, 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 the qadiani don't understand this they are so ignorant because you basically combine the two evidences and you don't cancel one of them you don't cancel one of them so you don't reject one over the other or you don't prefer one over the other basically this is not hidden here we go we've got adwa'ul bayan by muhammad al-amin jangiti it's clear that these heretics have no understanding of Ahadith. They have no understanding of the Quran. And the Dajjal, as I said, has completely fooled them. They are not upon Islam. And if you put everything together, their whole faith is, again, to force that Isa is actually dead. And he died in Kashmir and we've done a playlist as you can see on screen. I've got obviously numerous videos on this matter. Um, but you won't be able to knock any sense to these absolute um, idiots. Now I know it's, a, it's academic based, it's very reference based. But I just want to add that the two hadiths in question do not symbolize. One is Isa alayhi salam and the other that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was prophesied by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's blasphemy. It's kufr. That... You know, whoever lies upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, man kadaba alayhi muta'ammidan, whoever lies upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam intentionally, then reserve his seat in the halfa. This is lying upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. This hadith, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam talked about, you know, in, what he saw in a dream, he's not referring to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. Are, are, you, are, are you seriously that deluded? Now you can see on screen, there's another hadith, it's Sahih Bukhari, there's different variations you see. So, it mentions uh, about Isa alayhi salam, I'm not going to read the whole hadith. It mentions that, وَرَعِيتُ عِيسَى رَجْلَ الْمَرْبُوعٌ That Isa was a, was a man of like medium height. مَرْبُوعَ الْخَلْقِ And he was obviously of moderate complexion. الْحُرْمَةِ وَالْبَيَاضِ Meaning, close to red and white colours. Okay, close to red and white colours. So now, as you just read, we've got another hadith that mentioned Isa being of red and white complexion or inclined towards that complexion. So, how do we understand this now? Okay, how do we understand this? Because ultimately now, there's two hadith that mention two different things. Or there's numerous hadith, but the, the, the colours in question are red, white and brown. So as you can see on screen, we've got the book Mirqatul Mafatih, Sharr al-Mishkatul Masabih. Okay, by Mullah Ali. So, Mullah Ali Qari comments and he says, That, you know, his clothes, color was inclined towards redness and white. It basically means that it's inclined towards that. فَلَمْ يَكُنْ شَدِيدُ الْحُرْمَةِ وَالْبَيَاضِ That it's not sort of, you know, very white, nor is it red. 
okay so it's like in between so also we've got the shot of uh what's it called qadi uh, iyad ikmal so qadi iyad is commenting um regarding the hadith it's sahih muslim because ikmal is a commentary of sahih muslim and he mentions uh, about the hadith in question is what i to eat if i do rabatun ahmar ka anna kharaja min dimasin yani hammamin so basically he he saw isa alayhi salam and he had basically red complexion as if he basically left from the uh the masin, which is basically the, the, the bathroom. So, Qadi Iyad's commenting now about this, and he mentions, as for the description of Isa alayhi salam, in the riwayat of Ibn Umar, he is Adama, meaning Al-Asmar, meaning brown. And in another riwayat, he is Ahmar. So basically he's saying that you could argue that he is uh, red because of the statement, um, Okay, then he mentions, meaning that he is redness. But he further adds, Adama Musa. But he's mentioned brightness, with the uh, complexion of Musa alayhi salam. Wal Adamu wal Asmaru, that the brightness, meaning Wal Adamu wal Asmaru, wa khilaf al Ahmar, that it is different to redness. Then you return back to the saying, okay, of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, ka anama kharaja min dimasin, that is if he left the bathroom. Come back to me now. So, I don't even know why I'm recording this video with all due respect. Like, it's so basic that it clearly shows that these. Uh, Zanadiqa, these individuals that claim Islam but they're not obviously part of the Ummah If they knew what Rajah wal Marjuh is They would not have fallen into this mistake But like I said, their foundations are upon Kufr Their foundations are upon Zandiqa So it's not, it's not surprising that they're falling into these massive blunders Now putting everything together, there's different variants So what is the Rajah view? Okay, so you've got brown, you've got red Okay how do you reconcile between the two? What's the Rajah view? Okay, these Qadianis will know that. So I, as I said, presented by Nawi, and this is the best uh, position that one can have, which is Wala yakun al murad haqiqa. That the intent isn't it to be literal, meaning the brightness, wal adama, wal humra, bal. But in fact, meaning the brightness and the redness, but in fact, what is sort of closer to it. So basically, it's not literal. It's just what, what is closer to the two. And that is the Rajah view. For you to say, my ignorant friend, that one hadith, so 3339, when he mentions uh, uh, Al Ahmar or Humra, that is Isa alayhi salam, the Nabi from Bani Israel. Then when the hadith 3340, uh, when he mentions uh, Adama, uh, the brandness, that prophecy is in relation to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadi and Ghulam. <laughs> Honestly, you should be a stand-up comedian. Like, how much are they paying you? Honestly, eh? how much are they paying you? Must be a good pension at the end of the year, I'm sure, right? So, that's it. I've got a few other videos to record, just exposing his ignorance. Um, these Qadiyanis, you know, they're not part of the Ummah. Um, I'll make it clear, they're not Muslims. And we have the right to call them out for their heresy. This is why the National Assembly of Pakistan, after... And I did that in my other video when they deliberated for many days. Uh, they came to the view, obviously, after examining their, their beliefs that they're not Muslim. So I've got other videos to record, my ignorant friend. Your our video was just absolutely diabolical. It was ridiculous. You were better off not recording, mate. I left you guys alone. I thought, you know what, I've done my video, now I'm moving on. But like I said, you're so ignorant that to even have this view, like we wanted to show you a comedy uh, that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught uh, Ghulaym Dajjal Arabic Ibn Hajar would follow uh, <laughs> Mirza Ghulaym Ahmed Are you telling me that like, all the classical ulama like Imam Nawawi, Ibn Hajar, Imam Dahabi, Ibn Kathir uh, would have followed uh, your Dajjal if, you, if, if, they, if they were around in our time like please, like you know, save us the comedy. I know it's Ramadan, but it's supposed to be serious. It's supposed to be engrossing it about that. I didn't really want to record this video. I didn't want to record this video, but when you came out with your video, I thought, you know what, I gotta put you in your place. And I've got other videos to record to show you your ignorance as well. So honestly, you're keeping me busy. But after Ramadan, this is gonna be so take care of yourself and Nabi Muhammad. Signing out. <laughs> كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السعائر بادية في موقف ما أعظم لم تخف منهم خافية
والهول فيهم قد بدا الشمس منهم دانية في موقف ما أعظم لم تخف منهم خافية والهول فيهم قد بدا الشمس منهم دانية